everybody. In this video, I'll be talking for just a few minutes about the Sakurai-o Part 2 rudiment. Uh, the basics of this, or the basic idea, is that in the previous rudiments, I've kind of been giving you more or less a step-by-step -step guide of how to do something. And in this rudiment, it's giving you a little bit more leeway. You're going to have to do some research on your own. To help you get started with that, I can tell you kind of where the important part is on the web. If you go to this site, it's the Flask Sakurai-o documentation. There's the URL. You can pause this video and get, grab that URL. That should give you about all the information you'll need. And let me just scroll to the part that I think is sort of relevant, which is this, uh, sorry, rooms component. And so if you read that section, that should help you get started, that you can leave and join specific rooms. So the basic idea of this rudiment, let me just close this quite quick, is that you're going to de develop or expand your chat app so that people can be in a particular room. So if I'm in a room and you're in the same room, you'll see my chats, but if Steve's in a different room, he won't see my chat messages. So we're going to support this idea of having multiple rooms. Users are subscribed to a set of rooms means that when people create accounts, they can join various rooms and they will only can switch uh, to among those rooms in that set. So if I have a private channel called private, let's say, maybe I'll give permission to Anne so she'll have private in her group of rooms, but Steve won't. So, so when you're searching for something, you search for things limited to that set of rooms. All tables in 3NF. There's a video about 3NF uh, and uh, you can watch. And this you probably already have is just a register and account page. So in that write-up that I just closed, there is a link to a Git repository. And um, it's where I start on this demo. I've kind of added a few things just to give you a better idea of what I want here. But let me get things running. All right, it looks like I do. And let me bring in some um, chat windows here. Sorry for the, eh, if I can find my cursor here, it's a problem. There we are. All right, let me refresh my page here. All right, and you can see um, when people log in or get there, this person's joined the room general. So let me just uh, get a name here. Okay, so I have a name and let me create a room. I'll call it private. It's not very good UI in that this create button certainly doesn't look like a create button. Let me just make sure I'm in private. So it says and joined room private there. I really have a lot of debug messages that I'm, I put in just to see you know what's happening. resize something here. Just give me a second. Here's another chat window. Let me put Ben here. So Ben, you can see, is registered and he's, let me just make sure he's going to be in general. So he's in the room general. It says that down there in my debug messages. Give me another second here. So right now I have Anne. I think she was in room private. Ben, who was in room general, and here's my third um, person. Let's call that person Clara. And let me stick Clara in private. It says, so Clara's in private, Anne's in private, and Ben is in the general room. All right, so let Anne send a message here. This should be private. My send buttons don't, I haven't really spent a lot of time debugging how things look. So Anne sent this message. I just am replicating the room that they're sending it in. So private, this should be private. So Clara was subscribed to private. She sees the message. Ben, Ben was in general. Ben does not see the message. This is in the room general. And he doesn't see the mess, or Ben has the message there, but Clara's in the room private, doesn't see that general message, nor does Anne. Let's say Anne switches to general here. I don't do any refresh, but you may want to do that in your implementation that when they switch rooms, they'll see some previous set of 
what happened in that room, that would be pretty handy. Hi, Ben. So now we get, hi, Ben, they're both in the room general. Ann does not see that me those messages. So that's the basic idea of what I would like you to do. This is really pretty primitive. I want you to do more than I see. One, for example, problem is, uh, just give me a second, let me get another window up here. When a person first comes into a room, see if I refresh this, they'll see all the messages. Obviously, that's not a good idea to see it, messages from every single room that the server knows about. So you'd want to do a little bit better job than what I'm doing here. Again, if someone goes into the private room, it'd be nice if they saw the previous messages of private. That's not a good example. Better one would be here. So I'm in private. If I move to general here, we should see some of these previous general messages. So that's kind of the quick explanation of what I'd like. Again, you can get plenty of information on the web if you look at the Socket I.O. documentation about how to implement rooms. That would be of great help to you. I hope this video kind of explains what I want and gives you some direction into where to look for information. That's it. Bye.